How have William and Catherine found themselves in a huge row over a family photo? What is the truth behind the image and can they keep control of the crisis? We'll answer all that and more in a special edition of the show today. Hello and welcome to Palace Confidential. I'm Joe Elvin and here to discuss the growing row over the manipulated royal photos is the Daily Mail's editor-at-large Richard Kay and the paper's diary editor Richard Eden. Welcome to the Royal Richards. Now a reminder that if you hit that subscribe button then you are much less likely to miss bonus episodes just like this. Right, let's get to it. Now, after weeks of speculation and some unwelcome paparazzi shots, Kensington Palace finally released an image of Catherine, Princess of Wales, with a Mother's Day message. But no sooner had it come out than the problem started with social media sleuths pointing out a range of problems. Ian Lloyd is a royal photographer and commentator and he joins us via video now. Ian, thank you so much for joining us. What were the first discrepancies that you spotted on this photograph? Well, I didn't. I mean, like everybody else, I thought what a great photograph it was because you've got three children who are smiling at the camera in, and in a really de delighted way. And Kate looks really great. And I thought that was it. And it wasn't until the evening when everything hit the fan last night. And I suddenly went back and had a look and like everybody spotted little tiny flaws, but hardly anything worth uh, worth worrying about. I thought the uh, reaction of the agencies was a bit over the top, to be honest. Yes, I mean, and it's rather unusual, isn't it, that when you say when it all hit the fan, it's when the agencies decided to recall the photograph and say that they, would, they wouldn't distribute it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't remember that happening. I know that occasionally the palace has requested photographs that they <clears throat> think might have been taken by paparazzi or in an unlawful situation that they're not happy with. They've been withdrawn. But I don't remember it the other way around, where the agencies have, have stopped... Um, uh, photographs from the palace being released like that. So it's it's quite new territory, I think. And do you think that a lot of work has gone into editing the photo? I mean, is it is it more severe than any kind of other tweaking that you that you would see on a picture desk? Well, I think there's a, um, been a history of it. I mean, um, Catherine uh, took a photograph of the late queen with her great grandchildren. And uh, it's um, kind of amateurish i suppose you can see the um you know the join of where various cushions have been joined against the next one and i i should imagine some of the great grandchildren were superimposed and so on because again if you've got a large group it's it's quite tr tricky to get everybody looking quite happy but uh, and then of course there was a christmas card wasn't there last uh, december when um people were commenting that louis finger was missing and uh, I think there's an extra leg in the shot for some reason. So it was um, there's a lot of comment about uh, about that kind of thing because of course with William and Kate you don't get a background with the late Queen you got a background and you went around analysing the paintings and the china and so on. But um, with this you've just got really the faces of the people and you've just got to uh, uh, look at the quality of the photograph if you want to make a good story out of it. I think. Mm. And what would you have any? professional advice for the Waleses over this? Well, you know, how, how should they deal with the fallout? Well, I think the obvious thing is if they want to release their own images, which, um, I mean, they have the positive aspect with them, is that you get, get the children in a, a good frame of mind and they're not traumatised by having lots of photographers with light boxes and tripods and everything. It's a very relaxed environment, so you get the best from the children. So if you want to take those kind of images, then that's fine, but you must... Uh, I would suggest get uh, somebody in to, um, uh, to change the image if, if you've got little concerns about um, whatever it is, whether it's somebody's jumper's too long or a button's missing or something. If you've got little problems like that, then get it done professionally. And um, that's, I'm quite surprised they, they haven't done that given the kind of track record that they've got. Mm. Um, now, you've photographed all the members of the Wales family before, haven't you? How, how have you found them to work with? Well, I should say I've not I've not done the Wales that recently. I was a big photographer in the 80s, 90s and noughties, really. So I, I did Catherine and William's wedding and the, the birth of the children when they came out of hospital and things like that. Um, certainly in the early days, Kate was very um, uh, nervous, I think, of, of the of the photographs but uh, I think the thing that stood out really was William and you also see it with Harry where they want to protect their wives because of the the history with Diana you know the paparazzi mm. and, and people were in the 1980s one or two people made became millionaires on on after taking photographs of of Diana and uh, it got completely out of hand and it was on 
a lot of it was unlawful, I think. Um, and so they um, they tried. I think William tries to control it very much, and that's another good reason for not uh, allowing the press that kind of access that previous generations have given them. And yes, yeah, so thank you so much uh, for joining us today, Ian Lloyd. It's, a, it's such an interesting perspective. Ian Lloyd there, I want to bring in our expert panel now. Now, Richard Kay, lots of people might play this down, saying we all tweak photos from time to time, but do you think it's more serious than that when it's the royal family? I think it's more serious on this occasion, um, certainly because it's the royal family, but mainly because there is an issue of trust around all this. We have to be able to trust what the royal family are telling us, what they're telling us in terms of visual images that they offer of themselves and of their children. And we, we, take, them at, we take them at face value. And if, for example, pictures are being manipulated and so things don't look quite right and we have some of the leading photo agencies in the world uh, rejecting them, killing them as, as the uh, official term is, um, then there is a, a major issue of trust because if, we're, if they're prepared to manipulate photographs, what else is being manipulated? And of course the backstory to all this is that this photograph was issued with the best of intentions to try and dispel some of the myriad rumours that have been circulating for weeks, mainly on social media, about just what is wrong with Kate and, um, uh, and why haven't we seen her for so long. Mm. What do you think, Richard? Well, I think in the case of the, the agencies, I mean, their job um, is to distribute pictures and they, it is trust. They need to be trusted. So they have a policy of not distributing photographs which have been digitally manipulated. So they, they couldn't, in all honesty, distribute this photograph. That that's the problem. Mm. And, and it's from there that everything's started. Do you think that inevitably, I mean, obviously, everybody for weeks now has been worrying and speculating about the... Uh, princess's health. Uh, do you think that people will now start speculating about whether or not her appearance has been altered in that image as well? Well, we just don't know, do we? I mean, obviously, they, they, ho they hope that the statement that Catherine's put out on social media today will dampen things down because, you know, she's um, sort of saying it was, it was all me. Um, but obviously, it doesn't address what was changed in the photograph. So we haven't got a clue. Um, I suspect it was pretty minor stuff, but obviously then there's all the conspiracy theories about it's much more major, and, and that's part of the problem. We just don't know. What, I mean, what do you think the conspiracy theorists think it points to? What, you know, what, you know someone's, someone's cleaned up their family photo. Why is it such a scandal for some people? Well, I, I just think it, it, is, it goes to the heart of what we... Um, what we expect from the family, from the royal family, um, and how we, how if, how if you like, how we inter interact with them. Um, William and Kate have, have gone down a, a completely different path compared with other royals. They tend to take their pictures not just in-house, they tend to take them themselves. This particular photograph was taken by Prince William. Uh, Kate has taken many of the other pictures of the children. Um, so they've already removed uh, one level of um, outside um, involvement, if you like. They've kept it very tight. And we, we, we're, being, uh, we're being invited in to the Wales family. It's, it's a, a unique invitation and, and we're very grateful for it. Not just we the media, but also we the public. We love seeing pictures of the, uh, the young princes and the princess and s see how they're growing and developing. Um, but we want to be sure that we're seeing the real deal. Mm. We don't want to be misled. It's interesting though, isn't it? You touched on it and Ian did as well. Life was very different uh, for Diana and when William was a child in the royal family. Um, you know, the relationships with the media, with photographers, with paparazzi has always been really fraught and difficult. So you can understand why the Waleses try to contain all that. Oh, absolutely. And look, things have changed a great deal. Social media is obviously is the number one change and digital photography. But don't forget, the, prince, the late Princess of Wales um, was just as much um, a victim of uh, distortion um, by some ruthless, uh, unauthorised photographers, the paparazzi, if you like, who would present pictures of the princess in a situation and distort the narrative around them so they could get publication. I think in particular there are many instances of her 
being trapped by photographers. She was often on her own and the tears would start coursing down her cheeks. And those pictures would then be presented as, oh, Diana's under huge pressure because of her divorce, because of this, because of that. When in fact, the reason why she was sobbing like that was because of the presence and the activities of the photographers. Mm. Oh, Richard, I mean, where do we go from here? How does this speculation end? What can the Waleses do now? Because I'm thinking that presumably people will start going through old photos to compare how Catherine looks in that picture compared to just, you know, just before Christmas, etc. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of questions, obviously, that it provokes now is, was it just, um, was it just a question of digital manipulation on this one case? Or, you know, have they used it in the past? Has it become, um, you know, par for the course? But I mean, I'm, ju I'm just so um, sad and um, sort of frustrated about the whole thing, because I, I feel so sorry for Catherine, because I think essentially, she's been under so much pressure from people saying, we want a photo, we want to know how she is, tell us how she is, that sort of thing. And she finally, you know, issues this photograph. It's taken by Prince William. They make that clear when they issue the photograph. It comes from her, it's not some personal thing, it's issued by the Kenston Palace communications people. And then she has been thrown under a bus. You know, they've made her, or she has agreed to publish this statement today, signed personally from C, from Catherine, and I think it's disgraceful. I think it's very ungentlemanly of Prince William to um, put the onus on her. For goodness sake, he's the one who took the photograph, and they are the ones, the officials, who they made it public, they gave it out. It's their job. You know, I think it's absolutely disgraceful that they've said to her, well, you go and explain what you did. No, it's your job. I'm the editor of a diary. If I have a complaint about a story, I can't just say, Oh, but I was given it. I just put it in the paper. No, I'm responsible. Take some responsibility. So are you cross with the Kensington Palace press team or with William? Um, both, actually. I'm disappointed in Prince William because I think you shouldn't do that to your wife. He should be more gentlemanly. But I'm even more um, disappointed with the officials, who I think are a disgrace. That the idea that they just handed a photograph and, oh yeah, here it is, throw it out like a frisbee. No, your job, you're in charge of communications. You are responsible for what's issued from that social media. It will be examined closely by the whole world. So do your job. I mean, Ian Lloyd was saying he's really rather surprised given all of the history of, you know, there's always been these little retouching quibbles on, on uh, photos distributed by the Waleses. Why would they not have a professional look over it after the family have tweaked here and there? Well, again, I think that goes to the very heart of, of the kind of family that William and, and Kate have and the way they're uh, proceeding with their lives, if you like. Um, they've taken a radically different step, if you like, in how they conduct their communications with the public via the media. They're much more controlling, um, I think, than, than King, the King Charles's, for example, who's happy to allow his comms team to, to do as they see fit. Um, William and Catherine seem to want to occupy that particular position themselves. We don't know, Richard raises a very good point, but we don't know what happened once the picture was taken, it was given to the comms team. Did the comms team, and I can't believe they didn't, sort of raise an eyebrow about the fact, for example, that Kate wasn't wearing her wedding or engagement rings. There's a, probably a, a very lucid and reasonable explanation for that. Um, but they must have surely have, have pointed out that that would be something that the public would, would raise a question about. Um, even if they didn't go into the actual technical discrepancies in the image. Um, but I think what we really get, this gets down to is, is why are they like that? Why is William in particular um, more content to allow him and his wife to take photographs of their children? Now, there are obvious reasons why they do it. Um, the children don't get intimidated by the presence of a middle-aged man with masses of cameras festooned around their neck. They're posing for mummy or daddy. It's, mm. It makes a better, a better picture in many ways. But I think it tells you a lot about how, the, if you like, this sort of wall of privacy uh, and, and almost secrecy that William has um, erected around him and his family moving to that cottage in, in, in Windsor is part of it, living the life they are leading. Um, and 
very much protecting their privacy, which they're perfectly entitled to do. But equally, we, the public, are perfectly too entitled to ask why. Now, forgive, this is going to be a very cheeky question, but, I mean, there must be some Montecito royals absolutely loving this. <laughs> I wouldn't like to say, but, I mean, personally, I'd like to go through photographs issued by um, Prince Harry and Meghan over the years and, you know, check whether there was any digital manipulation there. Um, because it's certainly not a, you know, it's not a, a new thing. I mean, the, the, the thing is, it's, it is a whole new world with all this AI. I mean, we have adverts on the television selling the latest phones saying, you can adjust it, you know, yeah. you can make it look perfect. And, you know, there are apps where you take lots of photographs and then you select the best ones that you want. And th this is being encouraged. So for us media organisations, it, it's very tricky. The mm -hmm. Daily Mail has a policy, like all British newspapers, that we don't manipulate images. You know, we might lighten up an image or make it clear or something like that, but we don't manipulate them. And th the fact is the communications team at the palaces should know that full well. So you would ask um, William, who took the photograph, not his wife, you would ask her, oh, William, you know, was this manipulated at all? Um, but apparently that wasn't asked if we're to believe this account um, that they've that Catherine has put her name to. It's fascinating. Now, Richard Kay, this row comes on a, unfortunately, rather important day for the royal family, Commonwealth Day. Could this be why um, part of the reason that William has, is sort of like sidestepping this whole thing because he has, he, as we speak, he's on his way to important duties, isn't he? What, why is this day important and, and what is the mood likely to be like? Well, it's, it's a poignant day. It was a day that we always associate with uh, the late Queen, Queen Elizabeth, because for her it was one of the most important dates in the diary. It was all about celebrating her position, not just as Queen of, of England and, and Great Britain, but also uh, as a Queen of uh, many countries in the Commonwealth and the realms. Um, and it's a day when they reach out, if you like, across the world to remind everybody that the, the royal family are, are not just our royal family, but they're many other nations' royal family too. Um, so it's always important f for that reason. Um, and it's also particularly remembered because it was on this day four years ago, I think, um, that uh, Harry and Meghan provided their, uh, their last photo opportunity, the last time <laughs> they were seen formally at a royal event before before Mexit, before they hightailed it off to Canada and then to Los Angeles. Mm. Um, the difficulty for them today is that this very important event, important to them, um, is going to be completely overshadowed by a row over a manipulated photograph. And that was whether or not they made a statement or not, basically, at this point, isn't it? And interestingly, this afternoon, we've seen photographs of Catherine in the car with William on the way to the service. Now, we're, we're filming this as the service is going on, so we don't know if she's attended or not yet. Um, but could it be there's been so much cynicism about this photograph, this new row, that they want to say, Catherine is well, sort of, here she is. And, and even that much, seeing her in the car when we were told there'd be nothing before Easter, would seem to indicate that they very much do take seriously public opinion and very much care about this commentary. I think they do, and I think they've realised that the, uh, the narrative is getting away from them, and they've got to try and do something to try and pull it back. Mm. Well, um, a reminder to viewers that we'll look more at the Commonwealth Day event on our usual show on Thursday, so do make sure you join us for that. Now, Richard Eden, obviously we've talked about it so many times now over the weeks, Catherine's been very unwell. It, it does look weird, doesn't it, that she's the one editing the photo and sending it out? Uh, it certainly does look weird, and um, I have my suspicions about whether that's really the case or not. You know, I think they may have felt that it would work better if it was Catherine who sort of said that, because it would have that effect of, oh, we feel sorry for her, let's not kind of press the issue. Or, or is it simply that yesterday was Mother's Day, she's a mother? Um, I'm not sure, but, mm. you know, she didn't take the photograph. I mean, I must admit, when I first saw this um, picture. I was, I was quite surprised. I didn't actually tweet it or, or comment on it because I wanted to sort of take things in, but I thought it was slightly odd, uh, the, the picture at the time, that Catherine looked slightly out of focus, like her, her hand did and the whole thing and her, her eyes were sort of shining more than usual and the, it, it, it was all, the photograph was slightly odd. Um, Richard Kay, Ian Lloyd alluded there to the royals have always had 
trusted photographers that they work with for various occasions throughout the year. Do you think this incident will see the Waleses go back to trusting someone like a Chris Jackson or a Hugo Bernand? Um, I'm not over optimistic that it will in, in William and Catherine's uh, at all way. I, I think they like the way they go about issuing pictures, particularly of the children. I think they'll do official photos um, with those kind of uh, photographers of themselves. But I think at the moment, while the children are still young, they want to continue doing it that way. They're also a fairly stubborn couple. Um, and I think they'll argue that this is all um, a storm in a teacup got up by the media. Um, but perhaps um, when they have a time to reflect on it, they'll realize that it wasn't entirely a confected row at all and that they had a hand in it. Mm. Well, let's be fair, those photographs we've had in the past that Catherine has taken have been great because, like, yes, they haven't had, you know, they haven't been the sort of Cecil Beaton or the Snowden, but that you can see that interaction and the relaxed smiles and stuff of the children has been fantastic. So she's wanted to keep that, presumably, and asked William to, to take this picture. So it'd be a shame to lose that completely. But I think on this occasion, maybe instead of asking her husband, they could have invited a photographer in. I mean, I think it looks like perhaps someone's come to help do sort of hair and makeup and stuff. And, you know. She definitely did look like a, she'd had a yeah. nice blow away. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, maybe a hairdresser's come in. So yeah. one of the very talented photographers could have come in and as a professional, they would have known, you don't do this, you do this, and, and the, we wouldn't be having this, this row or controversy we have now. The one thing I did think was unfair was uh, the criticism of Louis being with his fingers like that. I mean, I have a double-jointed daughter. They can do all sorts of crazy things. <laughs> I didn't think, think anything was suspicious about that. Am I wrong? Um, well, I'm kind of with you on that. But the fact is, we've seen that before. Yeah. I think on the, the Christmas card picture, uh, there was sort of a missing part of one of uh, Louis's digits. So, oh yeah, uh, yeah, my daughter's not that clever. She can't make things disappear and reappear on command. But um, Richard Eden, the Wowsers, you know, we know they've got three young children, very busy lives, now health problems. Do you think they're just simply trying to control too much and they need to face up to the fact that they can't? I, th I think they are um, doing too much on, on this occasion. Yes, I think bringing a photographer in would have been a great idea. And, and I think the, the key thing for me is to have good advisors and strong advisors. And, you know, you don't want pathetic yes men who just, you say, oh, here's a photo. And, oh, great, thank you, I'll put it in. No, have someone who say, whoa, wait a minute. But maybe you know, people are afraid to. Maybe people are afraid to stand up to them in that um, respect. Maybe, but they shouldn't be because that's their job. And it's the same here. If, you know, if someone who's working with one of us is not happy, you want them to say it. That's what, um, that's how you improve. You want people to... Um, stand up to you, whatever. And I think here they they would definitely benefit from having stronger officials. And it wouldn't surprise me if heads do roll over this. Oh, if not now, then eventually. Richard Kay, um, one really unfortunate fact is that um, <laughs> Catherine is also patron of the Royal Photographic Society. Ouch. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, but. And they've got rules against this sort of thing, particularly in, in you know, light of AI and its, its development. It feels like a bit of a needless problem for her to be caught up with. It does, really. A, a bit of a self-inflicted own goal, if you like, in that respect. I mean, it, look, that can't be helped. She has a, numerous patronages. I'm sure it didn't cross her mind at the time of the, uh, when the error was pointed out to her, but I bet it has now. Yeah. Uh, Richard, I, I did allude to this earlier. They've, you know, they've owned up that it was a mistake, but some have pointed out that, that it does give the Sussexes ammunition. Who, you know, they've been so critical for so long of how the palace PR machine works, and now people will say they're right. It's actually a bit of an irony because the, the complaint usually from Harry and Meghan was the officials being too powerful. <laughs> these these men in grey <laughs> suits. You know, ordering around, manipulating the Queen. You know, not le not letting um, Harry go near the Queen. This sort of thing. But then here, they didn't do anything. You know, now they did, you know they weren't they weren't seemingly involved in this. You know, so it's actually the complete opposite of of what they've been arguing. Oh but but gosh. yes, I would love to go through all those old photographs of you know Harry and Meghan and check to see what if there's been any manipulation there. Well, you know, it'd be a fun weekend at the Eden House, <laughs> won't it? Uh, Richard Kate, I mean, obviously they will be very much hoping and to desperately draw a line under this, I think. But there will be lots of questions 
inside palace walls, lessons learned, etc. What what will the internal fallout be? What, what's your best guess? I think we won't really know until Catherine is back at work and we see her out and about and back, we hope, in, in the full bloom of good health. Um, the, Richard could be right. Heads could roll. Um, heads have rolled for, for lesser offences I've seen over the years. Um, poor unfortunate press officers have been given their marching orders. Um, but, you know, it does seem a, a bit unfair to lay it all on the servants, if you like, uh, when the masters were having control. Mm. One of the things which has struck me about how um, William and, and Kate ha have behaved, particularly in their interactions with, with the media, less so with the public, but with the media, is, I believe, because of what's happened with the fallout with Harry and, and Meghan, and the way that Harry and Meghan have weaponized so much of royal life and used it to beat the royal family with. William wants to give as little um, uh, ammunition, if you like, to his brother as he possibly can. So I think that is one of the reasons why he has taken so much inside, if you like. Mm. He controls so much of what we see and what we know about his family, almost in a way deliberately to lessen any chance of any of that information being used as a form of attack, perhaps, possibly by Harry and Meghan. Um, that, I think, is a, is a big reason why we've reached this position today. That's really interesting. Yeah. But, but do you think that the unfortunate fallout of that strategy is that this is only pouring petrol on the flames of all those horrible conspiracy theories out there at well, the moment, isn't well, it? That, that is obviously the, the big drawback for them. I mean, uh, the f first of all, the photograph was designed to try and dampen down those flames, and all it's done is see them flare up, and there are ever more fires erupting all the time, if we want to carry on that metaphor, because of all the uh, errors that people are spotting in, in, in that picture, and people aren't entirely convinced by Kate's explanation, it was all my fault, Gov. Um, so, yeah, I think they have, uh, they have inflamed the situation. Fascinating stuff, they keep us busy. Thanks to our two Royal Richards and to you for watching and we'll see you for our usual Palace Confidential on Thursday. Bye for now.